Let's start by learning Visio fundamentals and drawing basics flowchart diagram at the same time. We'll do it by building e-commerce process shopping diagram. Let's review diagram first and then I'll show you how to build it. When customers shop, first step they do is navigate to the start page of the shopping site. So let's look at this on the example of the Amazon. You come to Amazon.com and this is what you see on the screen. And you have multiple choices here. You can either search for new products or you can use based on the categories and you can explore the page in details a lot of different options. I try to generalize and categorize them uh, as, uh, as different categories here in the diagram. Uh, for example, you can search for items, you can review recommended items, you can review specials, but you can obviously arrange them differently based on the specific site you're trying to design. Next thing you do is you identify items for purchase. You go to specific category, for example, you find the items you're looking for and you add them to cart. Now let's look at how it's reflected in the process diagram. You have identify items for purchase and you can do it, as I mentioned, through multiple different steps. And then you add these items into the shopping cart. Next step, you go into the cart itself and you see this item and you're ready to do a checkout process. Let's look how it's reflected here. You go to the shopping cart, you can apply promotion or discount, or you can go and get more items. By returning back to shopping, going through the process again, you can use any one of this uh, listed categories on how you do shopping. And then you repeat the process until you're ready. When you're ready, you go through checkout process, order entry is created. You have a review, order confirmation on the screen page via email, uh, potentially on the cell phone as a text message, and then it ends your experience until you get the order itself shipped. To create BPMN diagram, you navigate to the file, new, and then you have a list of templates presented in Visio. BPMN is displayed right here, but if you don't see it, what you can do is you can say BPMN, which stands for Business Process Management Notation. Search for it, and it will show you all templates available for BPMN. We will pick BPMN Diagram Template, and you present it here with multiple choices. From my understanding, it's just the different styles, no per se uh, differences. So you can pick any style. The key is to have all the types of shapes that we are planning to use. So I'm going to pick this style just because I like it. There is no other reason. And we'll start brand new diagram. I am going to close this diagram. And um, what you see here is um, this is the template. Microsoft basically shows you the first page that creates it by default and it creates some help information right on the screen. It shows you the swim lanes as a pool, a pool one and pool two start and end point, and it shows you the tasks. There's also help how you can do some basic tasks, but which are very helpful. And we will look at those later in the video, how to align, how to add text and how to do diagram validations. So we'll look at all of those. But in the meantime, we will delete it. And I'm going to select the content and click delete. Uh, same here. I'm going to select the content and click delete. First step, let's expand the stencils bar and look at all BPMN uh, shapes that we just so you guys understand what we will be dealing with. We have start and end shapes. Uh, this is end event. This is the starting shape. Uh, but what we're interested in immediately, we're interested in the uh, swim pool and the uh, lane. So this is the one. Unfortunately, it's not at the start, even though you have to bring it uh, first. Uh, it's at the bottom of the list of uh, shapes and we will build it and install it. And uh, our first swim lane is for the customer. So let's rename default name function into the customer. I am going to make it a little bit larger on the screen so we can see better. And um, to do it, you use the zooming lower right corner of the Visio screen and I'm going to make the swim lane a little bit bigger for the customer. So we'll start with the start event and to start with the start event you just drag it onto the swim lane and see once it's selected you just start typing and uh, we'll call it start. So what is the first thing customer does? Let me ask you this question when it navigates to the um, e-commerce site. So the first step in the process is really to navigate to the start page of the shopping site. So let's do that. Multiple ways to do it. We can bring the task in same way as I brought the start shape. Or if you have it hovered, for example, I start uh, stop typing and you see this blue 
uh, triangles uh, right here next to the shape and when I hover them again I didn't click anything but I just hovered it shows me the typically used shapes and one of them is task as well and as you can see now I will click on it and what Visio did it uh, saved me a lot of steps first of all it saved me the step of dragging the task then it saved me the step of connecting uh, start shape and the task shape with the arrow and now it allows me just to start typing what the task is going to be about and the task is about to navigating to the start page of the shopping site customers can do multiple activities they can search items they can review recommended items and they can review some specials so let's reflect this in the diagram i'll show you another way to bring tasks in you just drag and drop the task right and the first thing we do is to uh, pinpoint most of the people just search for specific items right if you come to amazon uh, for example you might uh, start searching and another way to uh, add uh, tasks here you can do copy and paste right which duplicates the item and you see what Microsoft does uh, Microsoft Visio does is it shows us some guidelines so if you want to locate the task item uh, aligned with the first item and aligned on that uh, middle line uh, this green line pinpoints you and allows you to do it so but uh, next step for us is we uh, have a recommended section so the task would be review recommended items right and then the last way to do it, um, it would be similar to what I've done for the first uh, task box so we will just introduce another task box and you see it tried to align it for us but I'm gonna keep dragging and you see here it shows that the distance between search items review recommended items and uh, this box would be the same so and the last items would be review specials so what we have here we have one tasks that uh, one task that leads to three additional tasks so we would need to uh, use a connector and I will connect here because uh, that's one branch I am going to move this arrow for the lower box from the middle connector to the bottom connector and then I'll introduce the third connector here and uh, I will connect it with review recommended items to recap we've identified three channels how customers can search for items which are search for items review recommended items and review specials on the website based on this what customers do next is they typically just select the items that they need to purchase which is another task so let's enter it and we say identify item and all of these activities they lead to this particular action identify item for purchase so we will connect search for items I'm going to switch to connector and we're going to connect search for items to identify item for purchase and we'll connect review special to identify item for purchase as well so now you see that all three ways of finding the item identification step where customers identify the item for purchase let's go to the next step where a customer will add items to the shopping cart to do that we'll add another task and we will say add item to the shopping cart that customer has an option to apply coupon or another promotional discount so let's add another task related to this and this leads us to the decision point where customer would need to decide are there more items that they would like to add or not to add a decision point we add it as a standard way of adding items and we'll just ask a question more items and if the answer is yes then customer will go back to this step in the process and I'm going to drag the line so it goes over so there's no intersections of, on the line it just looks more professional and here we will say that uh, it's yes that's really the answer here but if the answer is no we will continue uh, the checkout process to do that we would need to expand our swim lane a little bit to do that you just drag the swim lane to the right 
The next task after adding more items is uh, the checkout process. And the checkout process is not just one specific task because it involves paying, it involves entering shipping address. So it's really a sub-process. And this is where I'd like to introduce you to the concept of uh, uh, sub-processes. There is a task for that. And sub-process is really an activity that has more than one step here. So we will bring it over here uh, and we will connect it manually and we'll give it a title and the title would be a checkout process and I started adding in the wrong place so I'm going to use undo feature of Visio um, as you see on the quick toolbar there's an undo button and what I need to do to type the name of the sub process I need to go back select the sub process itself and I'll type uh, checkout process what are the other Microsoft Visio topics you would like me to cover in this channel? Could you do me a favor? Could you please post them in the comment section of this video? I'd like to create new tutorials based on your comments. Thank you very much. Now let's continue and have more fun. This is the time when I'd like to introduce you to another swim lane, which we'll call order entry system, which is the database potentially uh, that uh, keeps track of all the orders that you have or the ones that customers submit. So I'm going to minimize um, and make it smaller. So zoom out a little bit and add another swim lane. To do that, I'll just drag the uh, pool lane here and I'll call this swim lane order entry system. And I'll expand it to make it the same size as the uh, top swim lane. And we will introduce the data store here and we will call this data store order entry system. And what we will do here, we will have a swim lane connecting checkout process with the order entry. And as you can see, um, order entry system doesn't have anything in the top. It only has connection points uh, in the middle. So one way is obviously to connect it uh, to this connection point on the sides of the database shape so which works but there's also a way to add uh, custom uh, connector shapes and that's what you use a connection point button for in the tools section uh, of this uh, Visio ribbon bar so this is outside of scope of this video I'm not gonna do it but if you want to research it's uh, rather easy to do so you can do it but we'll move on and add the last step or step before last in the process which would be another task and this task would be review and this is the task that will be done not by the system but it will be done by the customer and that leads us to the end and we'll modify uh, the connector a little bit just to make it look more professional and now I am going to show you a couple tricks so see this line it's not a straight line so a couple ways you can fix it one way is that just to drag it and now it's a straight line. I would like to show you a couple uh, tricks that you can use in Visio. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit again. Uh, right now, all these items are on the same line, um, but uh, we don't know that. And sometimes they may not be on the same. So if you really want to make them on the same line, uh, you select all of these items that typically uh, that should be on the same line. And then you say align and then you align all these items uh, in the middle and Visio automatically aligns them. And then another trick would be if you want the same distance between items that just makes them look more professional, you keep them selected and you say position and then distribute uh, horizontally. And once you select it, Visio rearranged all the items. Uh, so the distance between these items in this line is the same. Now, first item without holding anything to select the second item, I hold the shift button I select second item and then I select the third item so now three items are selected or another way as uh, you well aware you can just drag and drop mouse uh, cursor selection and uh, what we will do we will align and this would be a center type alignment and we also want to do potentially uh, distribute vertically so they are in the same distance last couple tricks I'd like to show you is um, kind of to change the visual appearance of your diagram. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see everything. And now we can make the swim lane smaller. Now we know that the size 
is not as large this is not as much space as we need so we select everything you can use shortcut control a to select everything on the diagram and there are different shape styles so if you don't like this color that i selected initially you can change different uh, style or color and that's right on the home tab now you can also go into the design tab and there are a lot more options here so you can select different themes for example maybe you want to select this theme it doesn't look very good you can always undo right this is an undo button and you can even undo this um, but uh, you can play with the themes and find out the one that you like and theme comes with the set of fonts and color so that's uh, really good or you can just if you're happy with the theme then you can look at some different variants of the theme right so whatever you'd like to do you can play with the variations right here in this part of the screen and you can also pick the background color also like uh, this worldwide domination um, <laughs> or just worldwide um, image of the world so if you want that obviously this uh, by using undo button and the last thing i wanted to show you is the tab cross-functional flowchart because we've selected bpmn tapes it comes with this cross-functional flowchart so you can do a couple things here um, sometimes it might be good to select and put a title of the diagram right into the swim lanes you need to select the uh, flow chart first now let's look at the styles here there are different styles that you can select and one style will show us that um, we'll have a title on the top so we selected everything i clicked select title on the top but nothing shows up why is that because i did not select the show title bar so now I selected show title bar and you see it doesn't look good because it added title to both swim lanes. So let's undo this. And what you need to do to add a title just top swim lane, we obviously only need to select the top swim lane and then say show the title. And that adds title only to the top swim lane. You can move it a little bit, use one page. Otherwise, if you try to print it, it will print on four pages, which is something maybe what you want, but uh, typically I try to save paper when I print. What are the other e-commerce topics you would like me to cover? Can you please post them in the comment section of this video? I'd like to cover them in my future tutorials. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Now let's continue and have more fun. Now let's supplement this diagram with what's happening in the back office. To do that, let's add additional swim lane. And to, do, to document all this information, we'll be using BPMN business process management notation shapes basic shapes i have them here on the left and first thing we're going to do we're going to add another swim lane we'll drag it from the box where all the shapes are represented into a separate swim lane and because it's an independent process we're not going to connect those swim lanes because uh, there is no sequence in placing somebody placing the order and somebody fulfilling the order and this is really what it's called order fulfillment this is how back office operations are categorized but we'll call them for simplicity back office in parents this is I'll mention order fulfillment so that's the first step we've added swim lane next step let's add a starting point for this order and this is the start event so we'll drag the start shape uh, onto the picture and next step is we will add a task to add a task i need to click on the start uh, shape and then it offers me a lot of different choices i'll choose a task and here in the task we'll say review order right because that's the first step that's happening somebody who received the order uh, on the back office and trying to fulfill the order they need to understand what's happening let's add this uh, start text here into the start shape uh, I selected it again and I just started typing and it's added the text start that's a starting point and that's the part of the notation next step we need to check if order is valid to do that let's select this task so after review we have a decision we need to check is order valid so let's add this question into the decision box and I'll put question mark and the answer here would be yes or no and based on this answers there would be different path so for example if answer is yes we'll add another task and we'll call it accept order right and here we will say that this is yes but if path is no we probably make sense to put it uh, at the bottom of the decision shape so i'm going to extend our swim lane a little bit and you see the way i do it is i just hover over the borderline of the swim lane and i drag it uh, to the bottom so now let's extend this uh, and I will have a task 
for no if order is not valid and the question here it's actually not a task so i made a mistake here in order for me to fix this mistake i can just do undo that's one way to do it or i can simply hit delete button to delete this shape and the connector so this would be another decision point for me and the decision is uh, another question where i will be asking can order issues be resolved it looks like i made a typo here so i'm going to use the spell checker to fix the question and because it's a decision the path might be yes or no for this can order be resolved question so let's first do the path no and path no would be easy we'll have another task we'll say we'll reject the order and we will have an end point so that pretty much ends our process we can start here if order is not valid we have issues we can't resolve them we reject the order and here we'll have to say yes and here we'll have to say no and looks like i made a mistake here because the question here can order issues be resolved if answer is yes we should continue to accepting the order this path is really no so if order issues cannot be resolved then we're rejecting the order so you got to be careful i caught my mistake myself but that's where the review process with your colleagues or customers whoever would be on the receiving end of this diagram is is very important to help you catch uh, all those types of issues now let's add another connector here uh, and to do that i clicked on the connector button on the ribbon in visual and i drag the connector and this would be a yes path uh, so if order issues can be resolved by back office maybe by contacting the customer or maybe by typical order issue might be item is not available so it was available on the side but never was removed but in reality in the warehouse it's not available so maybe it can be resolved by bringing the items into the uh, warehouse so where it can be fulfilled so if it can be resolved yes we're accepting the order and we're moving on our next step after order is accepted is that we need to package the order to do that let's add another task and we'll call it package the order after order is packaged next step is we need to ship it so we'll add a task ship the order and after shipping we need to generate shipment confirmation so let's add this task here and we have shipment confirmation typically it's a label on your uh, shipment package and then the last step would be notify the customer this could be done via email phone uh, a lot of different ways to do it we can also add um, a line here back to the customer i'm not going to do it just so i'm not complicating this diagram uh, but you can do it just send maybe the message or there are multiple different ways how you can show it in fact there is a message shape here uh, in the bpmn diagram types instead i'm just going to end this process and i'm do all this these two tasks that i promised you i will do so this is the end shape i'm going to type end and then we will uh, complete i'll show you the reason why we need additional connection point and how we can play with the funds so those are two tips and tricks i promised you in the beginning so if we look at this shape order entry system you see that order entry system only supports lines connecting from the sides what i'd like to do i'd like to add a connection point so my line from checkout process into the order entry process will go from the bottom of the checkout process into the top of the order entry system so let me make it a little bit bigger you can do it by clicking specific percentage or you can just zoom into that selected area and Visio will automatically try to understand which objects you're trying to get closer to so I'm gonna make even closer first step I'd like to do is make this shape aligned with the top shape and also i'd like it to be a line you see on the here on this bar there there are some lines that connect as, as i move it it moves with me so i want it to be on the edges of this line and i'll explain you why in a second but you want to position your shape so it is in between those lines and it's connected exactly to the lines on the, on this measuring tape that runs here on the visio screen in fact i switched into the view and it's called ruler so which makes total sense so on the ruler i'll use the right terminology on the ruler you would have to make sure and i'm showing demonstrating this again that it's your shape is aligned to the edges and i'll explain you why in a second next step we'll go back to the home tab we'll add a connector 
and here let's get even closer because this would be very helpful you see as I move uh, I need to have this order entry shape selected and I have a connector shape selected as well now I need to hold the control button and as soon as I hold the control button you see what happens with the cursor this is I push control button and then I release control button control button actually adds additional shape connector for me and the reason I wanted to have a ruler and you see as soon as I hit control button on the ruler the cursor shows up so now I know that 11 is in the middle of my shape and now I just want to find the right place on my shape borderline so I can add this connection point when I'm ready I am clicking at the left mouse uh, button on my mouse and see it added this red connection point now I should be able to switch back to pointer tool get my line and connect my line to this new connection point before I wasn't able to do that so now it's I know it's in the middle of the shape because I aligned my shape so this is an exact center and uh, I zoomed in so I can see exactly where I'm adding it and if I zoom out you see it looks much more professional let me show you another problem that we will try to fix here so we will go back to the order fulfillment diagram and here in order fulfillment this text is fine it doesn't exceed the sizes of the shape uh, but let me just temporarily so I can show you the point uh, make it exceed uh, the size of this particular shape so let me clarify the question and say can order issues be resolved internally and see what happens and you see Visio was smart enough it readjusted the size of the shape but now it doesn't look exactly as this shape what if I make it this size again you see it kind of exceeds the size of the shape but there's a tool here on the toolbar called uh, text block which allows you to play with the size of the shape so let me zoom in a little bit closer to this shape so we will see exactly what's happening and I will click on this tool text block and what you can do here now you can change how text is located and aligned and you can align it much better and it's especially helpful for this box because it's such an odd shape for me the fix would be remove the word internally and go back to the original size and that's exactly what I'm going to do but my point is that if you ever have a need of adjust the text inside the shape box just remember that there is a box here called text block you can trigger it by clicking here in the tools group on the ribbon or there's a shortcut shift control 4 that you can use and now let's look at how you can draw organizational chart diagram in Visio. By the end of the video, I'll show you how to create this type of org chart diagram in Microsoft Visio. Fastest way to create organizational chart as Visio is to type org in the search bar, which shows organizational chart. And it shows you multiple options. You can do wizard, you can do uh, department organizational chart, and you can do hierarchical organizational chart. We'll do department organizational chart. That's the best fit for what we're trying to do. And here you see Microsoft put together right away uh, the sample uh, Visio org chart. You can use this if this matches your structure. But we will start from the beginning, so I'm going to delete this org chart with all the shapes. Now, to create the organizational chart, we'll be using a um, chart for the manufacturing company. We'll start with executive notch. And let's do a quick overview before we move any further. We have multiple shapes here. Uh, executive is the top of an organizational chart hierarchy. Managers report to executives. And then you have different people reporting uh, to managers. So these are the key shapes we will be using. So we'll start with executive. And executive would be a president. So you just drag and drop shape as I did and let's zoom in a little bit closer so we'll put a name here and which what i did i just clicked on the title uh, it was an empty um, text box and i just started typing and when i'm done i clicked on another place outside of the shape or maybe another text box inside the shape in the typical structure vps report to the president so what i'm going to do i'm going to take manager's notch and drag it on top of the president and you see what it did it created reporting a uh, hierarchy and I'm going to say that this will be um, Darwin now I'm going to create another VP VP of production and I'm going to do the same thing drag uh, VP of production shape on top of the president's shape and that's how you build reporting hierarchy in Visio and uh, I'm quick, quickly gonna add another shape for VP of sales 
So now you see we built top of the company's hierarchy. Uh, what we're going to do next is we are going to create a managerial position. So under each VP, we'll create a manager, and then I'll show you a couple things you can do with employees. So manager, we're going to use the same. Uh, we can use the same notch, uh, same color, or we can use position notch. I'm going to use position notch just to show the difference. So under VP of Sales, we'll create a manager. Managers or VPs, they hire consultants on specific projects. So what we will do here, we will uh, drag a shape, and now we have consultant. To show that vacancy reports directly to Jane, I'm going to drag this shape and drop it under Jane. And you see it created relationship. Now I'm going to move shape a little bit to the left. So it will show that reporting structure is uh, vacant position reports directly to Jane. I'm going to build uh, some additional shapes in the diagram uh, through quick forward because you, you, I think you got the idea. And um, what I'm going to do, just create the structure so we can use it uh, to show you additional cool features that Visio provides. So now I'm done uh, building the structure. And what you can see is we have a very nice org structure diagram. Let's see what else we can do. For example, sometimes a president might have an assistant, so you do the same thing. You take a system notch and you drop it on the president. Now, what else you can do to make it look nicer, typically org charts uh, make look very nice when you give them pictures. So what you can do, you can click on the notch and you do a right mouse click and say picture, change picture. And what we're going to do, we will look at... Uh, couple of the stock photos. So this is Amani Burke. We'll just insert Amani. Then we'll do the same thing for Leslie. Um, I just need to find Leslie. Then we will have Jane here. And I'll do it in the fast forward so you guys don't have to see me struggling because it's the same operation. So now we're done with all the pictures, and I've noticed that I made a mistake, and I'm just going to show you how uh, to fix it. You see that for all the managers, um, Jane Smith and um, Robert uh, Siddiq, I used uh, blue shapes. And uh, mistakenly, for Andrea Roberts, I used VP shapes. So what I'm going to do, the easiest way, you can obviously delete it and bring the right shape, but if you want to keep the information um, that's already in the shape and just fix the shape, there's an easier way to do it. So what you do, you select the shape, and you see on the Home tab, there is a Change Shape button, and you pick the right shape, and the right shape for, for me is the blue shape. And now the change is made. Now let's zoom out a little bit, and I'll show you a couple cool things, uh, what you can do. First of all, you can change the design um, and view of your diagram, and the best way to do it is you, there is a new org, ta org chart tab uh, in Visio that you can see, and you can just switch between different options and it will change the layout for the shapes and pick even the different shapes. So we are in uh, notch type uh, layout and that's a default, but you can switch and, and try different ones. Since we're here in this tab, I'm gonna pinpoint a couple other cool options. So you can change different layout. We use horizontal uh, center layout, but there are other ones. So if you change them, you see how it redesigns the uh, diagram right away, but keeps all the information in the shapes. You can use vertical or side by side. I'll let you play with those, play with those different layouts. Um, you can also use option best to fit to the page, right? And that moves it uh, directly for you uh, based uh, on how Visio thinks is the best fit for the page. You can also move it by selecting everything and moving it around. You can also select spacing between the shapes by clicking uh, plus and minus buttons next to the spacing icon. And if you're a sophisticated user, what you can do, you can import organizational chart, and uh, that's a topic for another video. 
or you can export the structure and compare the data. This allows you, the, the cool features that this allows you to maintain the org chart uh, from the uh, database and rebuild it if you have a large organization and you don't want to build it every time manually you can just use the import feature and re-import the data and it will resync everything there are a couple additional cool notches that you can use for example if you want to add title to the diagram you can say uh, just drag and drop the title date notch and you can say this is abc company uh, or whatever the company is uh, um, and then it will automatically create a title for you. Uh, a couple other cool things. Um, if you know that you have like multiple team members, for example, team three team members reporting directly, like we knew that uh, three people, three VPs report directly to president, you can drag the three position uh, notch and uh, dra uh, drag and drop it under vacant position, for example, uh, and this will rebuild the structure and will automatically build three positions underneath of the vacant position. You can do it for any shape. What if you have more than three uh, positions or less than three? You can use multiple shapes uh, structure and you can just drag and drop it under the shape and then it will provide you the questions. How many shapes would you like to add? What type of shapes? Which is pretty cool. And then you pick the hierarchy. What's the best fit for this particular reporting hierarchy? Sometimes organizations run projects. So what you do, you can identify project group and you use what's called team frame. So you just drag team frame, uh, you group this and... Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to show you is the dotted line reporting relationship. So sometimes people report what's called dotted line. So they have primary reporting relationship, but also indirect reporting relationship. So let's say Andrea reports uh, to also VP of sales, not just global marketing. So we just drag this line and that creates this dotted line reporting relationship. Now let's look at some other cool features of Microsoft Visio, of what it allows you to do. If you click on the Design tab, we can quickly change the design. Maybe you like the layout, but you don't like the design. So Visio provides a lot of themes, and each theme has variant, and you can also pick a background. So let me uh, show you one option, and then you can experiment based on what you're trying to do and pick the one that you like. So you pick the theme that you like, and I'm just going to move uh, from theme to theme, and you see how it changes the picture. Uh, you can pick, for example, modern design, uh, and it not just changes the uh, color of the shapes, it changes fonts as well. And within modern design, for example, you can pick different variants. You can also change uh, col not just colors, but you can also change type of connectors and um, use different effects and use different colors. So if we pick different connectors, maybe let's put slice connector if this is what you like. And then backgrounds, a uh, couple pre-built backgrounds. Obviously, you can insert your own uh, image for the background, but let's just pick this world, and you see this. Now you have a global manufacturing company. Looks very good. I like it. Uh, maybe we can disagree on design uh, colors and themes, but uh, the only thing I don't like is uh, the size of the font. It's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all. You can select all by dragging. Uh, uh, all the shapes or you can also select all by pressing control a on the keyboard and then we go back to home tab and click font increase and you can probably increase it up to uh, limits where you can looks like Antonio is hard to fit but I think this is pretty good now let's look at how you can draw floor plan diagram in Visio to do this calculation I decided to use Microsoft Visio create floor plan and then use automatic features of Visio to calculate square footage. And this is what we're going to focus on in this video. I'm going to show you how to create a simple floor plan, how to do calculations, and how to use all the cool features Visio provides related to floor plan. To create floor plan in Visio, you need to launch the application and type floor plan in the search box. As you can see, there are a lot of different plans Visio allows you to create, like office layout, home plan, floor plan, directional map 3D, and a lot of others. So if you need those specific ones, please explore those options. But in this video, we're going to focus on the floor plan. I'm going to click on the floor plan. And as you can see, Visio brings all the stencils on the left needed to create the floor plan. By default, 
Physio opens walls, shells and structure stencils. But you also have points of interest, electrical and telecom, drawing tool shapes and dimensional architecture. And you can also add more shapes as needed. Just wanted to mention before I forgot that if you're interested to learn more about the subject, make sure to click the subscribe button. We have tons of things in the pipeline and I'm excited to share all of them with you. It is very simple to create floor plan if your room is rectangular. You just select rectangular room in Visio and bring it in into the uh, main screen. Visio allows you to zoom in so you can see bigger size of the room and you can see the sizes. So make sure as you're creating floor plan that you measure the size of the room first and then you can adjust the sizes here in the application. This particular room we are looking at is 21 feet by 26 feet and 3 inches. Now let's add a door into our room. You can just drag the door stencil and it will automatically add into the wall. So this is the door. You can do a couple things with the doors. You can make it bigger depending upon what the size of your door is. Typically it's three feet door that you have in the room. So you can play with this. If it's hard to adjust it with just the mouse, you can always click properties and say, okay, my door is three feet and it will become a three feet door. Uh, you can also change uh, how far the door is opened here. And obviously doors can open and close in a different sizes of the room so you can play with that too. To do that you just do a right mouse click and you can say revert uh, left right opening. You can do that uh, or you can also reverse in and out opening. So those are the very cool features. As with any Visio stencil you can copy and paste. So if you select the door you can cop, uh, copy the door and then paste it and I accidentally selected format painter which I didn't intend so you can uh, select the door click copy and then click paste and it will create another door if you want to maintain the size so maybe it's the walkthrough room right uh, and uh, this way you don't have to adjust the sizes after you create it creation of windows in the floor plan is also extremely easy you drag the window stencil into the room and drop it right on the wall. You can adjust window sizes the same way. If you'd like to learn more about Microsoft Visio, I recommend the online training course. I carefully selected this training course and hope you will enjoy it. Just navigate to howtoanalyzedata.net slash Visio to take advantage of the discounted price. I make a small commission to support this channel, but don't buy anything unless you need it. Now let's continue and have more fun. If your house consists of just rectangular rooms, you can bring in another rectangular room and adjust as needed. And you can do as many of those rectangular rooms as you need. As a next step, you can add doors and windows into those new rooms that you just put together. On the other hand, if your house does not have rectangular rooms, but all the rooms or some of the rooms are odd shapes, Visio still makes it possible to do floor plan even for odd shape rooms. To do floor plan for the odd shape rooms, you need to bring in wall stencils one after another and create configuration of the room of the odd shape. It is a little bit more work but the good thing it is still possible. The reason I selected Visio to create a floor plan is because Visio can calculate square footage of the created floor plan automatically. This is very nice feature and very useful if you're trying to calculate square footage especially for odd shapes room. To calculate square footage you need to take the space stencil and bring it into the space. 
in this example, I brought it into the first room I've created in this floor plan. The next step is you do a right mouse click and click Auto Size. And as you can see, the space stencil expanded to fill in the size of the room. And it automatically calculated the size, which is 551 square foot. You can also rename the office here by clicking on Properties and saying what's the actual name of the room. It could be Master Bedroom in this example. If you think that the Visio is the right application to do the work that you're trying to do and build the floor plan, make sure to check out other training links I provide in the description for this video to help you learn more about Visio. And good luck on your project. And now let's look at how you can draw network architecture diagram in Visio. In this section, we're going to look at how you can create professionally looking 3D networking diagram in Microsoft Visio. So first thing you see is this screen when you launch Microsoft Visio. We're going to pick a blank drawing, or you can basically pick a, a detailed networking diagram. It doesn't matter because we're going to pick some stencils uh, that will serve our purpose the best. As you know, when you pick the blank screen, you don't have any uh, stencils here. So you have to select the stencils and these are the uh, shapes that you're going to use when you draw your diagram. So we're going to click more shapes button and we're going to click network and we are going to click uh, network and peripherals 3D. I found that this is probably the most professionally looking. You might have different opinions, obviously, but that's uh, what I like. Um, and there are different shapes here. Um, you have uh, servers, ring network, pretty much all the items that you may ever need um, when you try to represent networking. We're going to start with servers and we're going to um, take the server box and we're going to bring it into the main screen. Um, I kind of envision that my diagram will be more horizontal so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna change the view of the uh, page and uh, uh, to do that I am going to go to design orientation and instead of portrait I'm gonna uh, pick landscape orientation so this way I can represent better what I'm trying to represent so this is gonna be my first server and what I'm gonna do now I am going to give the server some characteristics um, and they would be the type of operating system that server runs, location, memory, IP address, uh, IP address type, and uh, give the server name. This is not necessary for every diagram. You have to decide what you specifically want to represent. But this is something that uh, I'd like to represent here because this is something that um, uh, makes uh, value and uh, adds uh, descriptive information for my viewers. So I've added the information for my server. I'm just going to zoom it in a little bit. And there are a couple tricks you can use in order to see this um, in a better way. First of all, you can hide the shapes and stencils. This will give you more room on the screen to see. You can unhide them as easily. Um, or you can zoom in and zoom out into the areas. This is the zoom in button and this is the zoom out button. So what you see, it's a Windows uh, Server 2012 uh, located at Milwaukee Data Center. It has 8 gig of RAM, um, IP address, and this is the static IP. Now, I kind of don't like it when it's on the, at the bottom, so I'm going to move it to the side of the server box. In order to do that, I, I click once on the server, and you see this um, yellow box? This is uh, where the center of the text is located. So all I need to do, I just need to drag this yellow box and move it to the left of the server. So I kind of like it a little bit more. Uh, now, I also would like to add information for the server, like a server name, which is different from all of this uh, descriptive information for the server. And if you want to edit this, you can, for example, if you want to say, OK, this is my OS, which stands for operating system, you can do that. And you can say, OK, this would be bold. Uh, and the operating system name is not going to be bold and maybe location will be bold and all this information will be bold um, the type of information and the information itself will not be displayed as bold 
right? So probably if you do that, though, uh, you might want to align it to the left. Right now it's uh, right aligned text. You probably want to align it to the left and then um, this is how it's going to look. And then it probably might make sense to, to have it here. So it's just going to be more professionally looking. This is some interesting uh, tricks of what you can use in Microsoft Visio. Now, as I mentioned, I'd like to add the server name. And to do that, uh, I'm just going to bring in, uh, there are a couple ways to do it. First of all, you can add text. Um, and you can just uh, bring a text box here. So you go insert and you insert the text box. And you can pick between horizontal text box and vertical text box. I'm going to pick horizontal text box. But in my case, I'd like to prefer to insert callouts. Um, they come in the different shapes. And for this particular uh, server name, what I'd like to do, I'd like to insert the, this shape. And I'm going to name it as a sales server. Zero 01, and this would be my server name. So it's not a dot, it's a dash two. And this would be my uh, sales server zero 01. And I'm just gonna make it bold as well. And you can choose fonts, you can pretty much apply any formatting that you like. And I'm gonna put it underneath of this server. Now, this is my first server. And the good thing is, um, now I can do copy and paste. Uh, I can, first of all, I can group these three boxes. I can select, uh, it's actually two boxes, server box with the description and the callout uh, in terms of Visio objects. So I can do a right mouse click and I can select group and group. And now I can drag it as a single object, which is very nice. And you can group as many objects uh, as you need. So that's the purpose of the grouping function. Now what uh, I can do as well, I can copy this and I'm just going to show it um, through the menu because you can also do it through the keyboard. So you did right mouse click copy and then you did paste. And here you go, you've got a second server, right? And the second server might run the same operating system, but will definitely have uh, a different server name and different IP address. Um, document sharing 01. And I'm just going to change IP address so instead of. Uh, um, I have to ungroup it, unfortunately. Grouping, ungroup. And now I should be able to edit text. So this would be 02. Um, I am going to copy it again. Um, and I'm just going to copy and I'm going to do paste. So this is going to be my server 3. And this would be marketing box, marketing files, or marketing share. It doesn't really matter as long as it represents uh, the actual names for the purpose of this demonstration. I'm just going to use marketing sharing. This would be 03. And uh, now you can uh, add some other features of the typical networking diagram. Uh, for example, you can add the firewall and you can choose the size of the firewall. Um, and if necessary, you can use connectors and connect your server to the firewall. If you choose to do that, you probably would want to um, change the location and play with the location of the boxes. Um, so you, it wouldn't uh, overlap with your text. Um, so probably if you're trying to display connections, it makes sense maybe to, to have firewall on the left. Um, so let's do that. I'm just going to remove this connector. I'm then going to do control Z or you can do undo. I'm going to switch back to pointer tool, drag the servers to the right, have the firewall on this side and then use my connectors to connect the server here. And uh, you can certainly play with the lines uh, and make it look 
the way you want it to. So probably would make sense. This would be the most professional line. And uh, you can have other features of the line, like arrows and some other things, as you need to. So this would be my second line, and this would be my third line. It makes sense for it to go, kind of to display the network connectivity. In the previous section, we've created professionally looking 3D networking diagram. Uh, if you would like to learn more how this was done, just go back and watch uh, the first video. In this section, we're going to look how to make it look prettier and more professional. We just use default objects and uh, default fonts and default lines from Visio. Now we'd like to add uh, some specificity and uh, make it look uh, more professional and uh, use more professional design scheme, uh, maybe potentially uh, adding some arrow endings and using some features of the Visio that are easy to use, but at the same time help you make your diagram look uh, prettier. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the lines. And you see that these lines, they don't have uh, any arrows in the end. And Visio allows us to add arrows. Sometimes you want to show the data flow. In this way, it's bidirectional, right? It goes from firewall into the server and back from the server into the firewall. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the home, uh, click a pointer tool. This is where we can select the object and look at the properties of the object. And here we're going to look at uh, what type of connector, first of all, we can use. Could be a straight connector. Right, and this is the difference between the straight connector and the other connector that we had. I'm going to use undo button to go back. I like this one more. I don't like uh, straight connector, but that's just my preference. Um, I'm also going to look at the format shape. And here uh, you see the format shape um, details on the right. And it shows uh, what are the options that are available. First of all, we can change color. We can change uh, uh, the dash type. Right now it's solid, but you can use some dashes here if you want to. I'm going to keep it as is. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the begin arrow type, and I'm going to uh, use this type of arrow. And I'm also going to uh, do the end arrow type, and I'm going to use the same type of arrow. And I'm going to do this for all the arrows. To me, it's more professional. You might disagree as a viewer, um, but um, good thing to know is that you have choices and you can choose something that you consider to be professional looking. So this arrows. Now, I, I don't like these colors. I mean, just because they're default and everybody's probably using it without understanding that there are some easy ways to make the color thing better. And I'm going to show this to you real quick. If we go to design tab, um, we have themes option. Right, and uh, you can just click here and see how many of those themes are available. Um, I'm not a professional designer, but uh, if I see something that looks professional, I like that. Uh, so uh, if you're the same way, this is really helpful. And you can pick uh, a different themes here. So for example, let's just try this one. And you can probably even move from theme to theme and, and pick something that you like. So let's say I found something that uh, I like. Um, which this one looked pretty similar to original one. Um, but I kind of like the modern design, even though servers typically not depicted. So this is probably the, the best one. Now you have some variations of this. So once you selected the modern design, right, you can choose the color theme and uh, play with the colors. Right, so there are a lot of different options for the colors. Um, what you got to keep in mind when you pick the design theme, keep in mind that it's most likely will be printed at black and white. So if you pick um, very contrast colors or something that would be on a darker background, it might be hard to see when you print it. So that's what I always try to keep in mind um, when I print such diagrams. And you see when you change the theme and variant, it also changed the stencils and shapes and how they're going to look when you bring them over. So keep that in mind too if you're planning to add additional objects. You can also change and add background. So, for example, if it's like a global network, uh, you can put a global uh, background if you like. So that also looks professional, but you might want to reconsider the variants and the colors. 
uh, once you do that. So this is probably gonna look a little prettier. And now let's look at the Microsoft Visio most useful keyboard shortcuts. I'll start with my favorite shortcut that helps me align shapes. As you can see in e-commerce shopping cart, some of the shapes are misaligned. So what you need to do, you need to select all the shapes and press F8 button. That brings align shape dialog box. And in my case, I'm going to align them horizontal alignment in the center. My other favorite shortcut is Control S, which helps me save the document, which is just an equivalent of clicking the save button here. In Visio, you need to constantly change between pointer tool, connector tool, and text tool. And you can do it by pressing Control 1 to select the pointer tool. And this way you can move the objects or resize them as needed. Uh, you can use Control 2 to select the text tool and make the changes to the text. And click Escape to leave the text editing option. And you can use Control 3 to switch to the connector tool. And this way you can connect objects. Next, let's look at the set of shortcuts to help you manipulate the objects. For example, to move the object, you need to select the object and use arrow keys. You can move it up, you can move it right, you can move it left, you can move it down. If you need more precise movements, you need to sh use shift arrow. Shift arrow allows you to move objects in the smaller increments. Control L helps you rotate shape to the left. Control R helps you rotate shape to the right. Control G allows you to group objects so you can move them as one single object. To do that, you need to select all the objects that you're trying to group and press Control G. Then you move them as a single entity. To ungroup the objects, you need to press Control Shift U. Oftentimes, he works with multiple objects and they are laying on top of each other. To move objects back and forth, you can use Control Shift F to bring object to the front and Control Shift B to bring object to the back. Oftentimes, you need to draw different shapes in Visio. There are different keyboard shortcuts to help you switch between the drawing tools. You can use Control 4 to select Pencil Tool, Control 5 to select Freeform Tool, which allows you to maybe draw a cloud if you're working on an architecture diagram. Control 6 allows you to select the Line Tool, which allows you to draw a straight line. Control 8 allows you to select rectangular tool so you can draw rectangle boxes and you can start typing text right away. Control 9 allows you to select ellipse tool so you can draw ellipse shapes. One of my favorite shortcuts is Control Shift P, which allows you to activate Format Painter. Format Painter is helpful when you need to copy attributes from one object to another. And these attributes include color of the object, format of the text, and a lot of different things. To do that, you need to select the object, then press Control shift p This activates Format Painter, and then apply it to a different object, which mimics the attributes of the original object. You can always use Control z to undo the last operation if it's possible. You can also use Control a to select all objects in the diagram. This allows you to move them very effectively as one single object. You can also use Control c Control c to copy an object and then Control v to paste exactly the same object and then make modifications as needed. You can also copy and paste groups of objects. You need to select them first, press Control C and then Control V. Now let's look at the keyboard shortcuts that help you work with the shape's text. For example, you can select the shape and use Control U to underline text. 
and you can undo it with Control Z. You can also use Control B to make text bold or normal, and Control I to make it italic. You can also combine underline, bold, and italic. You can also use Control Shift A to make all text caps. You can use Control Shift less sign to make text smaller, or you can use Control Shift greater sign to make text larger. Sometimes you need to insert the picture, and my secret shortcut is Control Shift 2, which allows you to crop the picture. To insert online picture, we can click Insert Online Picture, type server, find the server image we are looking for, click Insert, and now we can use Control Shift 2 and crop it and remove all unnecessary items. For example, we don't like shade, and this allows me to remove it. And once you're done, all you need to do is just to hit Enter. If you like the content, please make sure to click the like button and share with your friends. Also, there's tons of information in the description of this video. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.